Good day class. I am Ma'am April May G. Agustin and for today we will be discussing another lesson which is all about the earth and its subsystems. But before we proceed to the discussion of our lesson, let us first have our opening prayer. Let us bow our head and feel the presence of our God. God of grace, we open our hearts, minds, and souls to worship to you. Thank you that today we dwell in your kingdom and live in your presence. Thank you that as we gather together, we join with all Christians across the world to glorify your holy name. Come be with us, inspire us, and lead us in another time together. We ask all this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, class, so for the checking of our attendance, kindly use the comment section below and type in your complete name together with your section. Our lesson objective for today is to explain that the Earth is consists of four subsystems across whose boundaries matter and energy flow. Let us now proceed with a short recap or review of our previous lesson. We have discussed that the Earth is being considered as the third planet in the solar system. The Earth also revolves the Sun around 365 days and the Earth is the only planet to sustain life. Why is the Earth habitable? The planet Earth is habitable because of the following reasons. It has a right distance from the sun. It has the right chemical materials that could support life. Example is water. And also the presence of oxygen in the atmosphere. Let us now proceed to the discussion of our lesson for today. What is meant by Earth as a system? The Earth system refers to the Earth's interacting physical, chemical, and biological processes. It includes the planet's natural cycles such as water, rock, and other cycles. When we define the word system, it means interconnected things or activities that are working together. Now let us discuss the different types of system. There are generally three types of systems. Open system, closed system, and isolated system. An open system can exchange mass and energy, usually in the form of heat with its surroundings. Closed system allows the transfer of energy but not mass, while isolated system does not allow the transfer of either mass or energy. Earth system as a closed system. 
A closed system is a system that exchanges only energy with its surroundings, but not matter. A closed system cannot allow matter transfer, but allows energy transfer. The amount of matter within a closed system is fixed. This can be illustrated by discussing the volume of mineral resources a planet has. Once used up, these mineral resources are transformed into something else, maintaining the amount of matter within this closed system. Different cycles associated with the planet Earth. Cycles are one of the major themes of the Earth's subsystem. This is the process wherein the material in the Earth's system was continuously recycled in numerous overlapping cycles. Earth subsystems includes the following. Atmosphere, Hydrosphere, Geosphere, and Biosphere. An atmosphere is the envelope of gases surrounding the Earth. Atmosphere of Earth's compositions are the following. 78% Nitrogen, 21% Oxygen, 0.04% carbon dioxide, and the remaining 0.96% other gases, mostly argon. Another subsystem is hydrosphere. Hydrosphere is the liquid component of the Earth, including glacial waters. The hydrosphere covers 70% of the Earth's surface. 97% of the water on Earth is salt water or saline, and 3% fresh water. The water cycle, or also known as the hydrological cycle, is the cycle that explains the continuous movement of water above or below the Earth's surface. It also involves the transfer of energy, example evaporation to condensation. The sun is being considered as the driving agent of this cycle. These are the processes involved in hydrological cycle or also known as water cycle. Evaporation, transpiration, condensation, precipitation, and infiltration. Evaporation is the first major step in the hydrological cycle. The sun is the major driving force of this process where it will hit the water and it will become water vapor. It also involves the molecular change of water from liquid to gas. Transpiration is a type of water movement that is typically happening in plants. The sun absorbs the water from the aerial parts of the plant, example the leaf, and it will evaporate and become water vapor. If there are many leaves in the plant, it would lose more water because it has a bigger surface area. Condensation is the reverse process of evaporation. It is happening when the evaporated water vapor cools down to its dew point. 
it is usually when the clouds are formed. Precipitation happens when the water is being released from the condensed clouds. It is the primary connection in the water cycle that provides for the delivery of the atmospheric water to the earth. Another subsystem of the planet Earth is geosphere. Geosphere is the solid state of Earth. It includes the structure, composition, minerals, and processes of the Earth. The geosphere is considered the portion of the Earth system that includes the Earth's interior, rocks and minerals, landforms, and the processes that shape the Earth's surface. Another subsystem of the planet Earth is biosphere. Biosphere is the most important subsystem on Earth. It is the totality of all the ecosystems in the whole Earth. It drives us to be in constant need of interaction with the planet. The term biosphere was coined by the geologist Edward Suth in 1875. Biosphere is the largest ecosystem because it made up the planet Earth and all the living and non-living things that inhabit it. Points to remember. The Earth is composed of four subsystems namely atmosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and biosphere. These subsystems interact with each other and they work together to influence the climate, trigger geological processes, and affect life all over the Earth. Thank you so much for attending my class today, and I hope that you have learned something. All the pictures and informations used in the PowerPoint presentation are credits to the rightful owner.